everywhere that you can go. Get vessels, not a few. Then he gives them some more instructions. And this is going to help some of you all. It's going to free you. Verse 4. And when you come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Can I tell you? When God is working a miracle, keep people out your business. You got too many Kushites in your business. Too many people. You telling folks that ain't got nothing to do with the miracle. The man of God says you and your sons. Not you, your girlfriend, and your best friend around the corner. You and your sons. We tell too many people our plans. Why don't you want to tell too many people your plans? Because everybody don't want you to have a miracle. Some people want you to get caught up. Some people want you in a mess. They want to see you do wrong. But listen to me. I don't care who's against you. I don't care who wants you to fail. If God be for you, tell me who, 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 who can be against you. But listen, don't make it unnecessarily hard for yourself. By telling everybody your business. I know you're excited that God spoke to you and gave you a strategy, but let's hold on, boo. Let's wait till it's over first. You got to learn how to testify when it's over. They're like, oh, child, I didn't even know you was going through. That's right. It wasn't none of your business. You didn't need to know I was going through. All you need to know is that God did it. Oh, I wish I had some help. All you need to know is that God did it. You didn't need to know what I was going through because you weren't going to help me no way. Why well, need to tell you? You ain't going to help me. My God today. And this is the part. There are some people that you can tell and they could help you, but they won't help you. But they just want to know your business. I'm not telling you my business and you can't help me and you can't help me and you won't help me. You got to learn how to work your miracle in silence. I want to tell 25 people, you got to work this miracle in silence. They don't even know you're struggling because you're just still praising God like you always been praising. You're still beating that face like you always been. You're still fixing that hair like you always come on. Don't nobody know you're struggling. You just work that miracle in silence until God does it. All right, all right. Shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Get up in there. Keep your mouth shut. Get on Facebook. Don't post no pictures right now. No pictures. No pictures. No pictures. No tweets. No. Not till God does it. Shut the door. Then he says, when you get up in the house and shut the door, start pouring into the vessels. Now notice, verse 5. Her and her sons went in. They went and got vessels from everywhere. It doesn't tell us how many vessels. But they went and got vessels from everywhere. And they took that little pot of oil. They took that little pot of oil. Just a little bit. Not a lot. A little bit of oil, but a lot of vessels. And the word of the Lord was just begin to pour. And every time you pour the oil, it's going to keep on flowing. Now listen, the flow isn't based upon what's in the pot. The flow is based upon the word that came from God. When God says every time you pour, the oil is going to flow, he was generating more oil. You don't hear what I say? Because when God speaks a word, it becomes a thing. That's why the word for word and thing in the Hebrew is the same word, debar. Because when God speaks, it becomes. You don't hear what I say? So when the prophet, as the representative of God, said that keep pouring the oil, it will flow. What he was saying is that every time you get to the bottom of the jar, I will create some more oil <laughs> and every time you get to the bottom i'm gonna create some more oil because i release a word out of my mouth that as long as you keep pouring i'm gonna keep on flowing i'm gonna prophesy to 100 people in here that as long as you keep on pouring god's gonna keep it flowing as long as you keep pouring god's gonna keep that thing flowing come on open your mouth and give god praise in this house Woo! Listen, that is why it's important to obey what he says. Follow the instructions. Don't add nothing to it. Don't take nothing away from it. Do what he says to do. And so they got in the house. I'm almost done. They got in the house. They pour in the oil. It's flowing. It's flowing. 
And then she gets to a point where she says in verse number six, when all the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said, there is not another vessel. So they all ceased. I want to talk to you about the people that's helping you work the miracle. Can I talk to you about the people helping you work the miracle? I know they in it with you and God said for them to help you. But you need to give them some very clear instructions. Don't say nothing opposite of what God said. While we are pouring this oil, I don't need you to say nothing that's opposite of what God said. Because words have the power to kill or to bring life. The man of God said that as long as we had an empty vessel, the oil would continue to pour. They had gotten to a place where they had gotten all of the vessels that they could find. And she says, I need another one. And her son, probably in innocence, probably in ignorance, says, Mom, there's not another vessel. And when he released that word, he stopped the oil from flowing. What do you do when you feel like you've reached the end? You don't speak death. You say, God, hold on. Let me go back to the man of God. Sir, we still got more oil, but I need more vessels. Can you give me a word where to find more vessels? See, you never let your situation of restriction cause you to speak restriction. Because when you speak restriction, when you speak limitation, when you speak that you're at your end's wit, you are going to stop the flow of your miracle. Now you have bound yourself up and the breaker's anointing that was released to give you the miracle is now bound because you spoke restriction. Some of you all starting today and even tomorrow, God's going to release a word and your miracle is going to start to flow. Be careful. How you speak about it. It's going to be rolling and then it's going to seem like you're going to hit a wall. It's not a wall. It's an opportunity for you to work another miracle. He starts the miracle, but then he presents you an opportunity to work another miracle out of your own mouth. The first miracle came out of the mouth of God. Now he positions you to release your own miracle. Am I too heavy? Are y'all tracking with me? What am I saying? If you get in a flow and you hit a wall, you say, God, just like you created this first situation, I need you to show me how to keep this oil flowing. I don't want this oil to stop until I get ready for this oil to stop. Notice that God is giving you control over the length of your miracle and the control is in your mouth. Oh, you missed that. <laughs> God is giving you control over how long the miracle lasts. The control is in what you say. If her son never said that there was another vessel, that oil would have kept on flowing. Don't let what you see cause you to stop your miracle. Don't let the people that's rolling with you cause you to speak against what God is doing because they can't think of another solution. Because God is going to keep your miracle flowing as long as you keep declaring that it's going to flow. And at that moment, the oil stopped. And I respect the woman. She had enough sense to know, okay, I put up all this oil in these vessels, but he didn't tell me what to do once this happened. She went back to the man of God. See, some of y'all were messed up right there. You would got all that oil and say, well, I guess I'll just do whatever I want to do with it. Nope. If he gave you instructions for the first part, you need instructions for the... She went back to the man of God. I want to tell some of you all, when God start flowing, don't start doing what you want to do with it. You better go ask God again, what do I do with this miracle you have produced? She went back to the man of God and said, sir, I did what you told me to do, what you want me to do. He says, I want you to start a business. Oh, y'all missed that. I want you to start a business. I'm going to try that again. I'm trying to speak business over some of y'all. You're like, who, me? 
I don't have no business degree. Boo, you don't need a business degree. I don't have no startup money. You're going to have it once your own start flowing. Oh, my God. I wish somebody would grab this by faith. He says, I want you to start a business. I want you to take this oil, and I want you to sell it. This woman has never probably even thought about having an oil business. But now you got so much oil. I don't know how much oil she had, but she had enough to start a business. He says, I want you to go and sell this oil. And the proceeds that you're going to get from this oil is not to buy no shoes. It's not to buy a nice car. It's not to buy no weave. It ain't to buy no yakky. No. This ain't to buy no nails. It ain't to go eat it up. It ain't to go smoke it up. It ain't to go drink it up. That ain't what it's for. Take this money. Pay your debt. See, some of you all, you know why God can't give you a miracle? Because he'll give you miracle money and you'll go eat it up. You won't even use the money for what you ask God to give it to you for. He know you don't have integrity. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right there. He can't give you the miracle hookup because the hookup, you're going to take it and use it for something else, not for what you ask God for. Take the money. Pay off your debt. I'm telling you, God is going to work some miracles in your finances when you make the decision to pay your debts first. Some of you all do not pay your bills on time on purpose. It's one thing if you don't have it. That's one thing. But to have it and not to pay your bills on time to go see Black Panther. Now, I love Black Panther. I'm all up in Wakanda. But I didn't, I didn't spend my bill money to go see it. So I said, I just got to get my hair there. I don't care. I got to get my nails there. I don't care what you talking about. I got to get this fresh line up. Bro. I don't care. I'll spend my gas money. And then want to cry and pray and ask God to give you gas money. All right. God is not working a miracle for you to squander it on what you didn't ask for it for. Pay your bill. On time. And then God gave them enough. He says, once you pay your debt, take the rest. And you and your sons. Oh, my God. <laughs> live off the rest. You didn't miss that. He could say you live off it. Your sons need to get a job. But God gave them so much money. It was enough that the sons never had to work another day in their life. I'm about to tell you that when God gets ready to work this miracle, it's going to be able to extend not just for you, but to your children and your children. So I wish somebody would give God praise. You should have jumped up and went crazy up in here. You sit here looking like you had a lecture. You better open your mouth and receive that by faith in the spirit. I know that's right, Bailey. Go on, open your mouth and give God a praise. Everybody said it. I'm done. This is what God told me to do. Some of y'all need a miracle right now. You need God to give you a word from the Lord. So we have prophets in this house. If you need a word, I need my prophets. Come line up across the front here. Come on, my prophets. Come line up across the front. This is what God told me to do. If you need a miracle, come hit this altar real quick. I mean, seriously, you need a miracle from the Lord. Come quickly, quickly. I'm not going to wait long. If you know you need a miracle, you know you need an answer. Also, all y'all got it worked out. Praise God. Good. Come on. If you know you need a miracle, that's a line up across the front. If you know you need God to speak a solution to you, line up.